Well, looks like it's time to hop back on Team Tank again. Okay, maybe I'm overreacting a bit, but through five games, my goodness, I can say at least now three out of the five games the Sens have played, they have not looked all that great. And it's funny because they, they started out okay yesterday through the first two periods. It didn't look like Winnipeg was manhandling them by any stretch of the imagination. But come the third period, this team just wilted, and that's starting to look like a bit of a problem for them. The Winnipeg Jets would go on to win this one by a convincing score of 6-3 where the game was a lot tighter than that at times but in that third period the Jets really blew it open. But let's get to the first period scoring summary here. Uh, power play goal at 14.03 into the first period. Nikolai Ehlers would get it again. That guy's just been killing Ottawa so far in this three game mini series. Uh, he, that's assisted by Neil Pionk and Adam Lowry. Uh, it would be 1-0 Winnipeg heading into the first intermission. The Jets are 1-for-1 one one on the power play. Uh, the Sens looked like they were doing a decent job of killing that power play. And then they just wilted after that. So that's really not good at all. And one thing I want to mention before I get on to the second period is a couple of lineup decisions by DJ Smith. And I'll get more into this after I review the goals here. But I just want to say this. A team that's been struggling and losing games and the decision is made to put Michael Haley in the lineup? For what? I'm to fight Nathan Beaulieu? Are you kidding me? Like this guy, he's got 11 career goals and 200 something career games. Like he's not going to be the answer to winning and losing hockey games. Well, he'll be the answer to losing them because he'll, he'll help your team lose, but he's definitely not going to help your team win. I mean, what, what the heck are, was DJ Smith thinking on that one? The Sens have guys that can handle themselves physically anyways. It's not just Brady Kachuk. I mean, Eric Branson could step up and fight. Josh Brown could step up and fight. Uh, Austin Watson can step up and fight. And although I'm not a big fan of those guys all getting uh, prominent roles because I don't think they can quite handle it, but they are definitely an upgrade over Michael freaking Haley. I mean... This is just, you take Galchenyuk out of the lineup and you keep Colin White out of the lineup in the name of Michael Haley. Like, just let that sink in for a second. I mean, this isn't the 1990s where it's all about gooning it up and uh, I gotta get that guy back. Why? Because he roughed up Brady Kachuk. Kachuk's not a small guy. Like, I wish they would stop talking about him like, like he's a small player and he can't handle himself physically. He can handle Nathan Beaulieu. That's nothing to worry about there. And I know the Sens don't want Kachuk fighting and, uh, you know, being taken off the ice or potentially injuring his hand or even getting injured in a fight, uh, like, you know, elsewhere uh, because he is a more valuable player, much more than a Michael Haley. But still, I mean, in terms of being worried if he can handle himself or not and having to have Michael Haley come in and fight Kachuk's battles for him, I mean, the, the Sens don't need that. Like, Kachuk can handle himself physically for sure. But anyways, let's talk about the second period here and the Ottawa Senators... Uh, they did not wilt in the second like they did last game against the Jets. Evgeny Dadnov comes in, down the wing. Uh, he gets tripped up by Derek Forbert of the Jets, I believe. He sweeps one in on goal. Halibut, he lets it in. I, I thought at first he saved it, but I saw the puck go in behind him. That was a relieving sight. Dadnov gets his first as an Ottawa Senator. Uh, that's got to be a huge relief for him. Nick Paul gets the assist. Erica Branson also get, picks up an assist on that goal as well. Then at 8.18, again, the Sens would kind of shoot themselves in the foot. Kyle Connor would get that goal back to uh, regain the lead for the Winnipeg Jets. Blake Wheeler uh, picks up that 500th assist that eluded him uh, on Tuesday night when the Sens played the Jets. So Wheeler gets his 500th assist. Congratulations to him, I guess. But, uh, you know, I obviously wish he would have got it against someone else. Uh, Shifley picks up an assist on that one as well. The Kyle Connor. Blake Wheeler, Mark Shifley line. I mean, that that is uh, that is an underrated line, I think. And the reason why I think it is underrated is because the Jets are in a small market and they play out west. And to be honest, I don't want. I hadn't watched a ton of Winnipeg Jets games uh, before this week, but now seeing them three straight games, and I know it's against Ottawa, and you know the Sens are kind of you know floundering a bit right now, but still, I mean, that line really deserves a lot more respect than I think they've gotten around the league so far. And this young Ottawa team would show some fight and come back and tie the game up at two as at 11-14 into the second period, Brady Kachuk would score his second of the season, assisted by Josh Norris and Austin Watson. Uh, Kachuk was battling with big Logan Stanley in front of the net. He comes off of Stanley there, he turns around, fires the puck. Again, maybe one Hellebuck should have had, like the Dadanov one, but nonetheless, they all count. Brady Kachuk gets his second of the season, and most importantly, he ties the game up at two for the Ottawa Senators. 
And then at 14.23 into the second, Nick Paul would tally from Artem Anisimov and uh, Mike Riley. I was going to say Morgan Riley, but no, Mike Riley. They pick up assists on that play. And what a shot by Nick Paul. And for me, I have to say, I think Nick Paul's been the best Ottawa Senators player so far uh, this season. Him and Tierney have been pretty consistent, I would say, for the most part. As far as the Sens' big guns go, like... uh, like, you know, even at Kachuk, he's been a little bit inconsistent, quiet sometimes. I think, uh, you know, Josh Norris, too, has been a little bit quiet, even Drake Batherson. But uh, a, a good foot soldier like Nick Paul, he's been a pretty prominent player so far, and he's really shown his worth. And he's got a lot more skill, I think, than people give him credit for. I don't think he is a legit top six forward, despite playing in that role tonight. Uh, he probably is better suited on your third or fourth line, maybe on the third line. But for me, Nick Paul has been um, Mr. Everything so far for the Sens as far as consistency goes. And uh, wow, what a shot. He, he displayed a pretty good release. Uh, I know they said in the intermission, Hellebuck should have had that one. I have to disagree, and I'm not saying this because I'm biased or anything. Um, I just really think that was a heck of a shot by Paul, and I don't really know how much more Hellebuck could have done on that goal. And this young Ottawa team finds themselves up 3-2, to two, heading into the second intermission on the road against a great Winnipeg team. But unfortunately, that would not last long as 224 into the third period. Andrew Kopp would score assisted by Paul Stassi and Nikolai Ehlers. Stassi just danced around Artem and Isimov. All I could think of after that goal is, wow, and Isimov's got to go back into the locker room, get his equipment and his uniform back on because Stassi just absolutely undressed him on that play. And then Isimov had a tough night for the Senators in general. And I wouldn't be too surprised if he comes out of the lineup next game. And I won't be rioting if he does, that's for sure. And that whole third period, the Winnipeg Jets really poured it on the Sens. They had a tough time keeping up with them. Uh, Ottawa, as good as Winnipeg played in that third period, the Sens got away from their game plan. I think with a team like that, especially when you're on the road against a good team and you don't get the matchups you want, you got to just keep it really simple in that situation, a tight game. Just get pucks deep, go work in behind the goal line, retrieve pucks like they were doing in the first and second periods, making it a lot harder for the Jets to break out. Uh, They didn't do that in the third. They kind of sat back and trapped it up in the neutral zone. You don't really want to do that against a team that likes to come full throttle with their offense like the Jets do. That would lead to a power play for the Winnipeg Jets. And the Sens would kill off the first power play. They get out of Dodge. It's still tied 3-3. Then Derek Stepan, again, much like in the very first game of the season, he just blatantly flips a puck over the glass. I mean, he's got to kind of work on that. That's been two times in five games now this season that he's made a play like in a very similar area of the ice like he did in game one as well. So he gets called for the penalty. Stepan goes off. Uh, the Jets are pressuring on that power play. They hit posts, Hogberg sliding left and right, making big saves. And Paul Stastny, though, would eventually tally, assisted by Blake Wheeler and Mark Shifley. He would slide a uh, five-hole on Marcus Hogberg uh, to get Winnipeg in front four to three. And, I mean, for me, it was kind of game over after that. Andrew Kopp would score his second of the season, his second of the game, assisted by Paul Stastny and former Senator Dylan DeMello. Um, he just makes this game look 10 times uglier than what it was, and he just makes it look like a really stinky, ugly loss for the Ottawa Senators. And Mark Shifley would finish it off with a, with a pretty nice empty net goal, I must say myself, uh, as he would get his third of the season, assisted by Kyle Connor and Blake Wheeler, uh, 6-3. to three. Uh, I think this game probably was a little closer than a 6-3 score, but nonetheless, the Sens did not play well enough in that third period to deserve a win. And I just want to say that this team almost looks like they just are finding ways to lose on different nights. Like they don't they don't believe they can win at this stage of the season right now. Um, because as soon as, for me anyways, as soon as Winnipeg got that goal to tie it up at three early on in the third, I was thinking to myself, there's no way Ottawa's winning this game. They're going to find a way to lose it in regulation, whether it's 4-3 or something like that. I just knew they were going to find a way to lose. And I'm not just saying that now uh, because the game's over and I'm going to look like some great prophet. It's just I could feel the way the game was going. And I knew the Sens uh, are very fragile right now at this point of the season, and they just almost look like they expect to lose at this point. Shots in the first period were 9-6 to six for Ottawa, 12-8 Winnipeg in the second, and 20-4 to four for Winnipeg in the third for a total of shots of 38 for the Jets, 21 for the Sens. The shots were pretty even through two periods, and then that, that totally abysmal third period that the Sens put out 
uh, just totally made the shots look really brutal and 38 to 21 ends up being your total. Uh, clearly not acceptable at all. So before the season started I was kind of harping on the Sens about them getting some bigger slower players and a lot of Sens fans were kind of on me for that saying I don't know anything about hockey, I have no hockey knowledge at all, uh, I have no knowledge of the Sens especially. But so far through five games I mean am I wrong? Is, am I wrong to say that, uh, yeah, they've looked kind of slow out there. Uh, these fast teams have kind of eaten them up so far a little bit at times, especially on their back end being slow. And then you go and put Michael Haley in the lineup. I mean, that's just crazy. And I mean, I hate to say I told you so, but I told you so. And that doesn't mean I'm 100% right. Uh, it's only five games. But... Like I said a week ago after the Toronto loss there when we got outshot 40-19. to 19, At the end of the day, I believe to succeed in this NHL, today's NHL, you can call it what you want. Everyone says, oh, this pussified league. Oh, I don't want to watch that type of hockey. For me personally, I think a speed and skill game is way more exciting than a game where, I don't know, you guys are getting blown up physically. They're getting smashed around into the boards. I'm just not really into that style. And I, like I said before, yeah, I'm a little biased towards a speed and skill team. But at the end of the day, that's what works. That's what wins in today's NHL is speed, skill, uh, tenacity, puck pursuit. Obviously, you need the puck to score a goal. And if you have the puck, the other team doesn't have it. And they can't score if they don't have it. And right now the Sens are having tons of trouble defending in their own end. They give up a lot of grade A chances, I find. So they need to play a system where they are pursuing the puck rather than pursuing the body and just kind of hanging back and, uh, you know, trying to clog up the middle of the ice all the time, which is good. You should protect the middle of the ice, but you don't want to never have the puck. And there's been a lot of times, like large stretches throughout these games that the Sens don't have the puck and they're chasing. So they need to play a style where they have it and the other team's not going to be scoring all that much on them if they got the puck all the time. But that's what I have to say about this game. Uh, you know, I went from a game where I was like, well, hey, you know, the Sens uh, look like they're, they're not letting the Jets roll over them. They're playing well through 40 minutes. Then they just have an absolute stinker and a half of a third period. Just disgusting to watch. 20 to 4 are the shots. I mean, I was thinking, my goodness, if I knew the third period was going to be this bad, I would have gone to bed after the second period. Um, but anyways, it is what it is. They lose 6-3. They got to get back on the horse here at the beginning of this super long road trip. They got three games against a struggling Vancouver team. Uh, so it's two teams that are really struggling so far throughout the season, the Canucks and the Sens. One of them's got to turn it around to this three-game stretch. Fingers crossed for me that it's Ottawa, obviously. But uh, please like and subscribe, guys, and share this video. Let me know what you think in the comment section below about this game, and especially that odorous third period that they had. And I'll talk to you guys again soon, and thank you so much for watching.